It's been a long winter, but it's finally springtime and it is time to reset your vehicle, get it all properly maintained and ready for the spring summer season. And in order to do that, I'm gonna walk you through the proper steps for a decontamination wash. Now you're probably thinking, what's a decontamination wash? How is that different? And basically it's a wash process, but a very, very thorough one using certain chemicals to remove industrial fallout from your, your paint and get the paint surface all clean so you can get, apply a new protection to the surface and make sure that it adheres properly because your paint is perfectly clean. Now, in order to do this, I'm going to be using this month's Glove Box monthly subscription because they include a whole decon kit in this month's box. Now, we're going to walk through the products that they give you, but really quickly, I want to let you know that for this month, they are offering you 30% off your first box. Just use code JOSH30 at checkout and you'll be set. And guys, just so you know, this is not an affiliate deal, nothing like that. I don't make any money from you guys signing up. Uh, I just think it's a fantastic service. It gives you the opportunity to try out new products and really find stuff that, that works best for you. Okay, now before we get into the actual decon process, I'm gonna go ahead and walk through these chemicals. These are kind of the essentials that you need. Um, obviously you need your wash bucket, a foam cannon if you have one, that's preferred. That's definitely my favorite method. Some detailing brushes and that's item number one in this month's kit is they give you this adjustable, interchangeable brush kit, which is incredible. Now this kit comes with the handle, one standard handle, and then four different brush tips that you can screw onto the end of the handle so you can change them out and depending on what you're working on. They have a nice super soft one. This is what I use on exteriors. They have a boar's hair, a stiff synthetic, and then a uh, softer synthetic. They also include a little angled uh, piece that you can attach. You just screw it onto the head and then take your brush attachment and screw it onto that. So it just makes it more kind of ergonomically correct. If you like having it with a little bit of an angle, they give you that option as well. Okay, moving on to chemical number one, that is going to be from Adams and that is their strip wash. Now strip wash is designed to remove any other waxes or sealants, light sealants, not full blown ceramics. It's not gonna remove that completely, but it's going to do a good job of breaking down all that uh, road grime and road film that's been stacking onto your car all winter. Give you the opportunity to break that stuff down and rinse it off. So you can use this in a few different ways. You can use it as a pre-wash. Just load it into your foam cannon. They say three to four ounces in your foam cannon. Foam it onto the car, let it dwell, and then rinse it away. Now what that's gonna do is break down a lot of the contamination and allow it to rinse off the vehicle as it's encapsulated into the surfactant so it's not just rubbing against the surface of the paint. It actually gives it a nice lubrication so that it rinses off properly without damaging your paint. Now the second way you can use it is actually for your contact wash or in a traditional bucket method. And for that, they recommend two to three ounces. I used two ounces for this and I used uh, four ounces in my foam cannon. Again, I'm using the MJJC Foam Cannon Pro for this task when I'm foaming it on. Um, I don't know how well this stuff foams with other ones, but the MJJC is known to get more foam than any others. And it did a fantastic job. It foamed on very, very well. Now, while this product is sitting on the paint, all right, I foamed it on, I wanna let it dwell and actually give it an opportunity to break down the contamination. So while I'm waiting on that, I'm gonna go ahead and address the wheels. Just get into the barrels, use a brush to get back in there. I'm gonna have all this stuff linked down in the description for you guys for all the products I'm using and tools. Um, so just check the information in the description below. It'll be there for you. Okay, so the vehicle's been sitting for about five minutes now. One important thing to note is you don't want this stuff to dry onto the surface. So make sure you're, you're, you're using it in a shaded area. The weather for me today is colder outside and lots of clouds. So there's a little bit of sun, but the paint was not heating up at all. I'm fine, the paint was very, very cool to the touch. So I foamed it on, let it dwell, rinse it off, and we're good to go. Next step, we're gonna go ahead and, and go in for our contact wash. So I filled up my wash bucket, like I said, with two ounces of the strip wash. Took a nice plush microfiber towel and did my contact wash over the whole vehicle. Once that was done, I rinsed it back off. Okay, so our basic wash process is done. I wanna talk to you really quickly about Adam's strip wash and what it is. Now on their website, this is actually a different color, which doesn't bother me. I know products can change color, not a problem at all, but this is the strip wash. On their website, they advertise it as a salt remover, pre-wash, and acidic wash. Now typically when you look at a pH scale, neutral is about seven. Anything below seven is going to be on the acidic side. Anything above a seven is going to be on the alkaline side. Now most pre-washes are on the alkaline side from nine to 12, somewhere in there. Um, this one they're saying is acidic, so I went ahead and pulled out my pH meter and tested it. And on my pH meter, it came in at about an 8.5, just right around there. So definitely more on the acidic side. So I went back onto Adam's website, looked at the MSDS sheet, and it says a pH of eight to nine. But then I also looked at the ingredients and they do have some ingredients that are of an acidic base. So that's where they're getting that. Um, but the basic idea behind it is it worked great. It did a great job of breaking down some of the stuff on the paint and rinsing it away. It made it much easier for me when I went in for my contact wash to get the leftover stuff. I didn't have to you know, scrub at it. It just kind of came up much, much easier. So great stuff. 
Now moving on to step number two is Adam's iron remover. What is an iron remover? Well, <laughs> iron removers remove iron and other types of uh, industrial contaminations in your paint. There's little specks of metal that are constantly landing on the surface of your paint that can cause rust down the line. On um, most cars, you can't see it. On a white car, you can. You look at it closely. You'll see a bunch of little kind of orange specks, and that's that industrial fallout. So basically what you do is as the car is wet, again, do not let this dry on the surface and use it in a cool temperature. If you can use it out of the direct sun, that's ideal. But you just spray it on the whole surface of the vehicle, you'll start to see it activate and start working and you'll start to see it kind of bleed. It'll kind of turn purple uh, where it's having a reaction with any sort of iron or, or that type of material and start to bleed it out and rinse it away or I guess dissolve it away would be a better way to say it. So I go around the entire vehicle and they actually say to let it sit for one to five minutes, I believe. Let me double check that for you. Yes, one to five minutes, but again, do not let it dry. So that's kind of your indicator there. Don't let it dry, but let it sit as long as you can without it drying. After it's had its whole work time and you can see it's turning purple and starting to dissolve all that stuff, Go ahead and rinse it away. Give it a really, really good thorough rinse. You don't want to leave the stuff on the paint, um, but give it a rinse and then you'll be good to go. Now the next step they didn't include in this and it's not always needed, but that is where you would do a clay treatment. Usually I would do that after I do my iron removal because the iron remover is going to be your less invasive way of removing contamination from the paint. When I first started detailing, this stuff wasn't even around for me. Um, so clay is all we did. You clay, you polish, you're good to go. Um, this gives you an opportunity to get the same or close to that result of removing that contamination without having to polish after because you didn't agitate or, or go into any contact with the uh, clay. But if you do want to clay the vehicle, I just made a, a video talking about the new Ultra Clay series from the Rag Company. Fantastic line of synthetic clays and actually traditional clay as well. They have one in their lineup as well. But I couldn't talk any more positively about them. I really, really liked them. They did a fantastic job of removing overspray, removing contamination from the paint, leaving it super, super smooth to the touch. And it did all that with minimal, minimal impact to the paint. No marring or anything like that, even on like a straight black material. It really didn't put much scratching in. It did a fantastic job. I highly recommend them. Go check out that video if you'd like. I'll link it up here for you guys. Okay, back to this setup from Glovebox. We did the iron remover, we rinsed it all away. Now it's time to just dry the vehicle. You're done with your wash. And then we can finally move on to adding back on some protection. And in this month's Glovebox, they include pH detail supplies, ceramic quick coat. Now on pH detail supplies site, they actually say this can use, be used as a waterless wash, a quick detailer. You can even use it on interiors, on glass, all that kind of good stuff. So a very, very versatile product. I had never heard of this brand before personally, and I had never used this, but it worked very, very well. I liked it. I applied it directly to the microfiber uh, towel that, th that was included in this month's box, then also sprayed it onto the panel wiped it in. It's not as slick as some of the other ones. You kind of, you, you want to grab it, work it in a little bit, flip the towel and then buff it off to a nice sheen. Looked fantastic once it was done. Add a little bit of pop to the paint and looked really, really good. Now this step is just the adding protection step again. If we're talking about just a decontamination wash, the basic rule of thumb is pre-wash. And again, this is a pre-wash type of soap. They also make higher higher pH soaps as well, like up to a 12. Kokemi makes some, Built Hamber makes some. Um, I don't know if Adams makes anything at that high pH, but um, there's definitely other brands out there. Gion makes them. And those are great to foam on, let dwell. Again, break down all that stuff and rinse it away. Then go in for your contact wash, rinse that off. Then you do an iron remover, rinse that off, clay if you need to. If you don't need to, no need to do it, right? You don't have to, uh, you want to do the least invasive process as possible to get the desired result. Always keep that in mind. Some people say you have to do all this stuff. Just do what's necessary. You don't have to uh, overdo it to get the result. And with that said, guys, that'll do it for today's video. I want to say thanks to Glovebox for sending me this box. Again, if you use code JOSH30 at checkout, I'll have it all linked down in the description for you guys, but use JOSH30 for 30% off your first box. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like the video, make sure you subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and we'll see you on the next one.